Well, Headless Horde, the Book of Boba Fett is officially over. Thanks for coming back to the channel, and here's my Episode 7 breakdown and review. So, let's talk about the beginning of the episode. So my first question is, is why does the Speeder Gang have to tell Boba to stay put so they can protect the people? Like, doesn't he already know that? And then he and not, then he asks for approval from Fennec, and then he'll, he has to wait for her to nod. So why? And then, why are they staying there? Wouldn't it be smarter to go back to Jabba's palace, grab some supplies, maybe how about Slave One, and then make their stand over in Masaspa. So, the beginning was a little bit off to me. It just didn't feel like um, Boba Fett really taking charge. Then we see the X-Wing come flying in, and right away you already knew that it was going to be Grogu in there. Um, I thought it was going to be Luke, and we didn't even get that. So next we have the mods who show up, and I thought in the episode there was just too many scenes with those mods. Um, to me, it, they just don't seem like Star Wars, um, and the speeder books are still going about three or four miles per hour, so... I, again, I, I could have done without that for the whole season. So they set up all the posts, and then all of a sudden Fennec says, Oh, no one's going to sneak up on us. And literally five seconds later, there's Cad Bane just standing there. A little silly, I thought. And then Fennec has to calm Boba down um, after Cad Bane says that, you know, the Pikes took out all the Tuscan Raiders and made it look like the you know, biker gang did you know so she's got to like, calm him down like he I don't know he's just I know he's an emotion you know he's emotional there and it, it just I don't know it's something it just didn't feel right about that as well I just don't like how he always has to look towards somebody else to make his decisions for him I thought black Chrysanthemum was extremely underused yes it was cool to see him come come over to the fight and he's throwing guys left and right and you know, he gets shot down tons of times, and I don't know. I just underused, and I didn't feel like he really did much in this final episode. So after Finnick saved the mods, she disappears for the next 30 minutes while she finds the leadership. She was completely underused in this whole series, and it's like they just didn't give her or Bulba really enough to do at all. So in a cool little nod from the prequels and the Clone Wars, we get to see a couple of Scorpionic Annihilator droids come on in, and they start destroying everything. Now, here's my one gripe with these guys. At one point, our heroes are running down the streets, and this thing doesn't hit any of them. Like, it, it just doesn't make sense. I get it's Disney, and we did see a couple mods get shot earlier in the episode, but how is this thing not hitting one of them? So the Rancor comes, I'll get into that a little bit. Um, and then finally we get to, get to the Cad Bane fight. And again, it just was so short. And then they just go ahead and just kill him off. And I know there was some beeping at the end of that, you know, at the end of the death, but I, you know, I don't know what that means exactly. Um, so he may still be alive somehow. But again, it just, you know, they spent so much time with that gunfight. And then the thing that everybody wanted to see, which was Bobo versus Cad Bane, and it was literally maybe 15 to 20 seconds of action. And the ending was definitely meh, as everyone basically survived, and then the typical joke is made, and then the episode basically ends. As, you know, there's a short little scene with Mando afterwards. I, I just don't see how they're going to have a season two. Um, I, I would actually be shocked if they have a season two. So anyways, let me, I'm going to go, I, I don't want to be all negative, because I mean, I, I, I did enjoy the series, so let me go through some stuff here that I really did enjoy in this episode. Um, I thought the first scene that we saw with Bulba, with his helmet on in this episode, when he comes out to confront Cad Bane the first time, I love that he, actually he does it twice, crosses his arm on that rifle. That's classic Empire Strikes Back right there. So that, that was one of the best scenes of the episode. I also liked the, the twist that the Pikes had killed the Tuscans. So I thought that was that was pretty cool. 
Uh, I, I kind of figured it wasn't the Barchi Gang, so that was a nice little twist there. Um, I love the, the Boba using the tablet as a distraction. I wasn't really a big fan of the Mirror's assistant character, but I, I did like that. And then we got to see, again, one of the better scenes in the episode with Boba and Mandel using their jetpacks and flying through the air and, and just picking off the pikes. At this point in the episode, this is when the Scorpionic Annihilator droids enter, and Mando and Boba Fett have trouble taking them down, so Boba Fett basically leaves Mando there and flies off to get reinforcements. So just a little background on the droids. These droids were originally created during the Clone Wars and were placed on the front line. Now these droids were expensive to make, so only a few were ever produced. There is no word on how the Pikes actually got the hands on two of these droids. So this is where we get our Mando and Grogu reunion, which was just absolutely amazing. Um, we all knew it was coming, but it was really, really cool. And Mando loved that he was wearing the armor. Next we see Boba Fett come on in, and this is when he's riding the Rancor, uh, one of the probably best parts of the episode. Um, and he basically goes around tearing up those two droids. Um, does take some damage. And the one thing I didn't like was when Cad Bane sprayed his uh, flamethrower at him, he basically knocked Boba off and kind of took off. And then he does this like little King Kong climb. And I mean, it was okay, but I could have done without that part. So after the Cad Bane and Boba Fett fight, we then see Boba's crew like start shooting the Rancor. Like, listen, the Rancor just saved everybody. And then they start shooting them. So Mando starts taking on the Rancor one on one. And eventually, Grogu has his moment and basically uses the Force to put the Rancor to sleep as he then takes a little nap next to the Rancor. In the end, we didn't get Han, we didn't get Kira, we didn't get Bosch. I know sometimes Star Wars fans can hype things up and expect a lot, but when you have so much lore, I don't think it's unreasonable to want more. The post credit scene was okay, um, and I'm glad that Cod Vanth is at least alive, and it looks like he'll be getting modded up. Uh, he's a great character though, so I am happy about that. Overall, the episode had its good points, but it was average for me. I give it about a 7 out of 10. I wish the series would have done a few different things. Number one, I wish that at least one of the OG bounty hunters were in it. I mean, Dengar or Bosch or somebody. I find it interesting that that didn't even occur. But we did get the live action debut of Black Chrysanthemum, which was pretty cool. Number two, would have liked to see Kira, but it's possible that Amelia Clark didn't, doesn't want to play the role anymore, so we don't really know. And then number three, I love seeing Luke and Ahsoka, and I do like episodes five and six the most out of all of them but it just made this season feel very unbalanced. I wish we could have seen Boba be more of a badass throughout the series. I think maybe one of the biggest problems is that the overall story was below a basic and average, and that may have been the major flaw. But I'm glad to still be getting Star Wars, and I'm very excited for the future. So next up we have Kenobi on May 25th. Well, now it's your turn. Tell me what you thought in the comments below of how did you feel about episode seven? How did you feel about the series as a whole? I really appreciate you guys taking the time to view and watch my video. Please hit the subscribe button, toss a like if you like it, and I'll see you guys in the next one. And don't forget, keep those heads on.